but on the day of recording this video, everybody in the UK who used Google, which is probably most people, would have been met by this large, sinister face staring at them. To say that it is reminiscent of the opening scenes of George Orwell's 1984 would I hope be obvious. And with one click, I found out that the face belonged to Olive Morris, a feminist, a black nationalist, and a squatter's rights campaigner. This is the face, the face that follows you around the internet. This is our new big brother, and you'll see it appear in all of the screenshots I use in this video. There was a time when left liberals were really very secretive, and their influence upon society was still a slow creep. But not anymore. This is hardly subtle imagery, is it? The use of Morris at this exact time is important, because with a little more clicking, you'd be presented with this quote. Now, for those unaware, Brixton is an area in South London, and a few nights ago, it saw one of the worst riots in recent British history, with upwards of 30 police injured. Several hundred people decided to take over the area, and stage a mob party come rally. And when the police arrived to ask them if they had a permit for this event, well, the cr crowd didn't like that. Not one bit. And without much hyperbole, you've got scenes like these. Something that looks like it's out of Black Hawk Down. The police should be the only legitimate use of force, physical force at least, within the state. They're supposed to be there to enforce the law. That and that alone. But it's no surprise that this mob felt like it could act this way, not when we've been treated to scenes like this in recent days. We're frankly lucky that none of the police were killed. Bricks and bottles aren't toys after all. Just ask the people in the medieval period, they knew. These recent events, them and many others, have brought to the forefront the weird culture war that most people have felt increasingly creeping over society. People aren't sure what's really going on, or which people are sincere or even how to express their concerns, especially since whenever they do, the establishment rears up to destroy their life. But people aren't dumb. They know that the unjust death of a career criminal in Minnesota doesn't mean that a group of black racists and left-wing agitators can go around smashing other people's property, or a next part of Seattle, or for some reason, deface the Arnold Schwarzenegger statue. The problem is in the nuance and people's personal ideological slants. For some, the violence is just a natural relief of pressure, or a fringe element of a very earnest, moral and just ideological movement. But whatever racial injustices go on in our societies, recent events and this movement that is part of the broader left liberal ideology are the opposite of sincerity or justice. And the sentiments expressed even by the so-called peaceful elements of this movement are neither benign nor honest. This is a problem that is deeper and more pernicious than what Gordon Peterson popularised as cultural Marxism, a term that may make people feel at ease because they leave Marx to be an obscure figure today. After all, wasn't Marxism and communism defeated? But the rapidly increasing violence and fanaticism and irrationality of the left liberals should convince people otherwise. Because left liberalism is not a passing fad. It is the outcome of a movement that is at least 100 years in the making, and whose roots are at least three times as old as that. It is true that the violence that we've seen recently, and indeed the preceding years of increasing petulance and substitute and gerrymandering from the left liberals, well it's true that that is a direct reaction to the success of things like the Brexit vote or Donald Trump's election. The multitude of mental breakdowns broadcast live on the night of Trump's election are amusing, but also an eerie prelude to the kind of fervent violence and dogmatic politics we are now witnessing. Since these two democratic votes, the left liberals have done everything that they can, besides the democratic process, to overturn them. And failing, they've at last started to resort to direct violence, and acts that really are very close to civil war in some places. It's the type of thing that sounds insane, the type of thing that happened in films like Robocop or The Dark Knight, and yet it is happening. But the success of democracy, as in Brexit or the election of the president, has simply brought to the surface the genuine thoughts, feelings and tyranny of the left liberals as they stared at their own defeat for the first time in their lives. 
It isn't George Floyd's death or Brexit or Trump's locker room talk. And it is certainly not the existence of long dead slavers who were almost certainly the ancestors of today's bourgeoisie left liberals. No, it is the existence of left liberalism itself which has made us all inevitable. And I mean inevitable because the ideology is one of division and hatred and power monopoly. And this makes conflict with inevitable. The answer to this video's title, therefore, is in part because left liberalism has taken over all the positions of power in the UK and many Western countries, from political and civil institutions to media to universities and even the big corporations and tech companies. But if there is one thing I want to communicate in this video and through this channel, it is that left liberalism is able to survive, despite contradicting all of our decent values and longing for facts, because our understanding of history and the development of modern Western countries is woefully outdated, often wrong, and frankly controlled. And therefore, that until we have a revision of history, of the language we use and the methods of understanding, left liberalism will continue to survive. And it will survive because the language and methods of understanding we currently use are theirs. It's left liberal. Imagine trying to argue with somebody when the only language you can use always says that they are right, no matter how many ways you try to say that they are wrong. Or imagine trying to argue the details of Islam with someone, or when the only intellectual understanding the two of you had were Islamic. You can only talk about and understand the world in terms dictated to by Islam. Well, this is the equivalent of the language and understanding we have at the moment. It is the left liberal's language, and it is the left liberal's understanding. And therefore, no matter how hard people try, they find it impossible to properly criticise left liberalism or defend themselves if they try. This malformation and control of language and history brings us neatly back to the Big Brother iconography of Olive Morris, because it is exactly the same kind of manipulation described in George Orwell's 1984. For example, look at how the only part of history anybody can ever reference these days is Nazism. Well, that's a way to control thought and language. Or how about the way that the word slavery, or the phrase slave trade, is used exclusively to refer to the Atlantic slave trade, and even then, only the part of it conducted by Europeans and the USA, ignoring the vast input of Africans and Arabs. Ignoring what must be the salient point, which is that all peoples in history have enslaved each other, but it is only modern European countries that, en masse, ended up destroying slavery as an institution entirely. These kinds of facts and ideas that can propel this revision in learning are all out there, and there are good people who can help to do it. But since left liberalism is currently in all of the positions of power, there is no hope that this will occur from the top down. The only way it will happen is if ordinary people, individuals, educate themselves and take that education and confidence that it brings with them into society and change the institutions themselves. Because the institutions themselves are detached. Detached from reality, detached from historical fact, detached from any analysis that excludes left liberal ideology.